stay in the seat, Jermaine. <laughs> This nigga gonna fall off the roof. I can't wait to see the man go. Boom! He said, I can't wait to flip it. Oh, okay. Where Rose, man? How you doing? My name's Khalil Kane. I play Raheem in Juice. <laughs> Omar Hashim Epps, I play Q. Jermaine Hopkins, I play Still. <laughs> Stand the scene, Tupac. Tupac Sikor, I play point guard for the Chicago Bulls. Thank you. <laughs> no. Stand the scene. Tupac Sikor, I play Bishop. <laughs> All right, I play Bishop, right? Okay. Now, if he's the glue and he wants to get away, and he's the Mac. I'm the glue remover, the make you come back, and the Mac killer. I'm all that. I'm the antagonist. Oh I am the, the friend with all the surprises. I am the guy you can go to when you need help. I'm the one you can lean on. Can you smell it? I'm the can shoulder. I'm the shoulder you can, the shoulder you can be on. It's a bull around here or something? That's what I'm doing. I smell it. Smell no, like I'm the one that put him on swim fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got that off. You got that off. I guess it was about four weeks of homework. Work, I mean, one, I didn't know which role I was going to do. I was up for Q and for Raheem. So I had to study both, both of those roles to come in. And then when you came in, you weren't sure just exactly what Ernest and them was going to put you up to. So you just had to be ready to just come off in whatever character it was. So it was a lot of homework involved, you know, and I wanted it bad, so I did my homework. My audition was, it was homework, but it was more tiring for me because we auditioned together, matter of fact. I auditioned yeah. for Raheem too. It was like for like six hours, unexpected, for a long time, you know, and they called us back different days and it was just tiring, but you just had to stay fresh. It, it, you know, every time they called you in for a new mix, we had mixes of eight, you just had to stay fresh, you know, like it was your first time doing it. How many weeks? It was like four weeks. Yeah, it was like right? four weeks. Four weeks. My audition, it was bug, because I've never been the one like it in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. It was bug because it was like they put us together, and I when I I, I never went to audition, and I was reading with somebody, like in, in a in a group like this, and I, I had a good feeling that we was all gonna get the part. He know it, cause I came back and I was like, yeah, I think we got it, cause we were the best. You know, you we, we got bounces off each other, and you know, Ragging is a, we going to get this. I'm so, locked you know, in. It, it was a, it was a bugged out audition, new experience, fun. I got to meet that. Yeah, the lunch was good. But I got to meet that. But... <laughs> yeah, we got to eat all anything we wanted. And I liked it that. I ain't been no audition like that. But I'm not a hungry type person. Don't think that. Don't you believe him? Nah, my audition was crazy because I didn't, they got to study. Everybody got to, I didn't get the script or nothing. I had to go in and do it cold. And I didn't know which part I was going for. But the only thing that helped me was that. It was a criminal part, and I'm a criminal individual, yeah, man, so it wasn't chapstick? no fun. Oh! <laughs> Pepe wants to be funny! <laughs> well, ask where he's at in the middle of the movie. <laughs> Pepe is gone. Somebody got a loud-ass radio. Turn the radio down! Turn the radio down! <laughs> You got a big mouth. Up. Man, would you bring your fat ass away from Don't the wall? Look it out! <laughs> the Mac has spoken. The okay. fat has broken. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, you need to be a comedian. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh! It's like, it's like to me, it's all I gotta say. The movie is like a modern day coolie eye. If you like Cooley High, you're gonna love this movie. It's like one of those tear jerking, everybody working, realistic, straight street movies. But it's good. It's not just the exploitation film. It's saying a lot. The, the camera work is dope. Everything is real. Yup, yup.
Pepe? Pepe and Ant-Man, y'all got something to say to that? Like Sunfuck. Could you do a little bit of the storyline on Sunfuck? Why don't you, why don't you just go see the movie? <laughs> Could you go see the movie? Could y'all go see the movie? I'm saying. It's five That's bucks. That's all you gotta do. Word I'm saying it's five, five bucks. bucks. Six fifty a movie? Come on! Right, we tell you, are you really gonna go see? We're in New York. Seven dollars in New York. We're not in Oakland. Yeah, we're Pump not in Oakland. <laughs> Gazoo. Oh, see, I'ma get in that frame. Oakland. Can I ask a question Oakland though? So we can ask a question. So, Mr. Pepe, how old are you again? <laughs> <laughs> how, how old are you, Pepe? How old are you? Fifty-two. <laughs> Nineteen. Stay in the Stay in the scene. Stay in the scene. Yes. Yeah. Well, the producers, the only reason they chose to shoot in Harlem because they, they wanted nah, some nah. soul food. <laughs> See, they didn't know how to just, they couldn't just walk to a soul food restaurant. So what they did is they made up this movie and made it on this location just so at lunchtime they can get some soul food at M&G and at Sylvia's. Hey, that's some good He's stuff. He's telling the dude. truth. That chicken was That's good. why they did the movie in Harlemwood, so that the producers and we could have lunch at the soul food right. joint. No, that's not true. To make it more real, to be on the serious tip. Yeah. To make it more real. Why would you say, well, this is in Harlem when you're filming it in Bright Plains? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eddie, Plains. are you listening? You know? Yes. No. <laughs> Eddie. You know we wanted to give something back to the brothers and sisters in the hood. That's right. Yes. That's yeah. right. This is a, yes. film, this is a film about New yes. York. Yes. So why film it in a studio somewhere in Pepe. California? That's right. That's true. You know, film Besides it in the true. The money why, why, it. why? But Plus, Earn wanted us to do it here. That's right. Yeah. What Ernest wants, Ernest gets. Ernie Earn. That's true. Well. The intelligent hoodlum, Ernie Earn. <laughs> Ernest, Ernest is a hoodlum on the down low. I know. We should tell him. I know. Ernest, should we tell him about that? We no, I don't tell him. Tell him about Somebody that. stole Ernie's gold during the movie. And let me tell oh. you what happened. So during the set day, Earn went out there and just started firing his kid, beating his kid down, taking his jury back. Yo, wasn't that you, Kazoo? That was Kazoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got that on Pepe. You got that on Pepe. No, 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 no. Can we ask I a question? Can we ask a question? Can we ask a question? How old is Pepe? No, but can I. Can we get the age? Can we get no, the age? No, but on a serious show, I could have sworn it was Stumper stomping that kid out in the street, though, wasn't it? I don't know. I, didn't I was see there. Him. I was walking up the street. I was, I was coming up here for another interview, and I looked across the street. Ant Man. And there was Oakland Stroke stomping his kid out the street. Serious. You know, you come out here with that old wild caliber. I'm from Oakland. I don't care about these niggas out here. I want to say one trying thing. Trying to get us all killed. I want to say, I want to say one thing. This is what happens when you don't use birth control. Oh. oh. This is my little public service announcement. <laughs> what happens when you don't use birth control? You get fatty cells gathering up. <laughs> you got that. Nah, word up. As you can see, we're having a good time. We became like brothers on the set. Shh, that's a brothers in arms. Who? No, was... Brothers Ooh. in arms. Huh? I saw something. Man. Well, we became like nah. brothers, and we became like, you know, the deli customer kind of thing. <laughs> 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 no, nah, man. We did. We did come like brothers. Oh, let's go this stuff. I'll break it down for you on the serious side. Oh, break it down on the serious side. Break it down now. You get your date. Oh, the, the storyline for Juice is getting a date, right? Oh, God. Get seven dollars, fourteen dollars, and go to the movie theater. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, come on, come on. Tell the story, oh, man. Stay in the scene. Stay in the scene, Omar. Scene, Omar. Okay. Stay in the scene, hey, man. Nah, break it down for me. The storyline is like this: four young black males, tight like glue. Now we want to see what happens when these four black males try to grow up, and we all go in different directions. That's exactly what the storyline is. It deals with a lot of fear, peer pressure. It deals with a lot of like young black males being trapped in today's society and the kind of um, reactionary things that we do to get out of it. Word up. We get put, we get put in situations that we really don't know how to make an intelligent decision about. Yeah. So from what we know, right. from us growing up on the streets of Harlem, that's how we make our decisions on what it is we're gonna do out here in the streets. Word up, big brother. Especially to get just because, big brother. Just because you grew up on the streets doesn't necessarily make us intelligent yeah. or knowledgeable. It just means that we have decisions Street that we gotta make out there, and we make the decisions, and the film illustrates what happens from the decisions that we make. And these are decisions that all young brothers out in the streets today are yeah. making. It's like so life, everybody's gonna be able to deal with this. It's like you get a camera yeah, and you go through a 
neighborhood and just start filming. That's just that's just how real it is. Because all black people, our dads ain't um, doctors you, and lawyers. Right now, and they right like now, that. this film is going to tell a real street story. Yeah, yeah. Because Joey's not going to clean up his act and run nah. off to Cornell at the end yeah. of the movie. No, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's true. For real. And dad can't help us out of this one. Dad can't help us. Why? Why must the story so be told? Story... Because there's so many movies being made and it's not enough, you know, reality and real stuff in it. You know, it's just a bunch of this and that. Well, I think it go like this. Somebody ride through a neighborhood. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put that in the movie. You know, that, that you know, it's so just, that's why it's so there, true. I feel, you know what I'm saying? It's so there true. are a million black stories in this country alone and all of them should be told. This is one of them and this is a real one. Right now, there's a, I don't wanna like, say any names or anything, but in my opinion, there's a lot of black fairy tales being told right now. Right, yep. You know right. what I'm saying? Preach, brother. We need some black stories, and this is a real black story. Real That's real. why this film is, has been made. That brothers right. can relate to now. You exactly. know what I'm saying? That's going on right it's now. It's not the past. It, it's now. This is what's happening going on now, well, right All now. the time. And this is the story of today's young black male, and it needs to be told because it's still stuff happening, like um, police beating up brothers in the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all that needs to be told, because everybody's saying, Stopping said, oh, you for nothing on the highway. Yeah, all that still happens. All that real you know stuff still happens. And, it, and all this needs still to be told. Our little ten for the next the generation. Wee -wee. So that they don't go through that. Yes, most definitely. One, because <laughs> because this is this is a story that that is gonna that is gonna cause some people some pain. Yeah. It's yeah. not the kind of story where you leave and you're gonna be up. This is gonna emotionally charge you, so that young brothers that are in the street. One gonna learn a lesson, hopefully. Two, their parents are gonna go see the film and realize what their children mm -hmm. are dealing with on the street, yeah. and maybe possibly do something to alleviate that pressure that's on those kids. Hopefully, they'll understand. It's gonna send a big message out there. They'll you know understand. Um, young black males better. Hopefully, they'll look at us when they see us drinking a forty or acting crazy in the street, and they'll say, "Well, what they, makes him yeah. tick?" And in this movie, is showing you what makes us tick. Put that good, man. I like that. You put that good too. <laughs> Don't do it, chicken pock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you trying to say? Crazy idiot. Well, look at him. Bishop, look at him. Bishop was psychotic <laughs> to begin him. with. I mean, Just it like all stems, it all life. stems, it all stems. In my opinion, people, how they act out on the street has a lot to do with what goes on at home. Yeah. Speak, brother. There, there Speak is, brother. It, what, if you go see the film, there is background on why Bishop is the way he is. Basically, I have no role models. That's why I went over the edge. No ah. role models. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> that's, how, that's how a lot of brothers are, you know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers are just born Crazy, and, and being that he has, you know, there's a lot, a of, bad lot of bad seeds. Yeah. You don't have but nobody to try to But at the same time, at the same time, it's like a pressure cooker. You, you yeah. got things building up inside you, and if you have no outlet for those, right, right. it's just gonna build up to a point where you can't control it anymore, and you're gonna explode. That's and right. that's what happens to Bishop. And when he explodes, the fragments just go ain't everywhere. Nice. Ain't just, nothing nice. Just, just look just at it. Right. Listen to the name, Bishop. Bishop. You know? Nino ain't everybody got nothing on me. Trust. Oh, Wesley yeah. rolls on the spot. Nino ain't got nothing on me. Oh, I must say, we, 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 back yeah, to, the, to the thing thing, when we was talking about how we was getting along and everything, before we even started filming, we was we was chill. It wasn't like we had to work for like six or seven weeks to get fly. We got fly at the audition. We hiked and so bugged long. out. We we never called each other our names. No, you know, we, we all, never, I don't even all, know their names. You know, we all got he's nicknames. He's Fatty, he's Pepe, he's Ant-Man. To Big me, chop. that's what they call me. To me, chop. you know what I'm saying? And he's Gazoo, huh? So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, like you know what I'm saying? And see, I liked thing. it because we can all bug out, you know, ain't nobody get serious unless they don't feel like being bothered, you know. He, he going, you know, he go, now is not the time to press me, Fatty. You know? Because I'm sad I'm I knock on his door. Hey, Tupac, how you doing? Boom! I'm like, damn, I just called the camera see how you doing. He <laughs> slamming the door in my face. Now is not the time to <laughs> Anything dealing with violence Anything. that's being caused in Anything. this movie Anything. is done by this fool. Anything. Nigga. <laughs> right here. I ain't nothing but a real. <laughs> Crazy. Idiotic. What causes the violence? Oh, what causes violence is that we. We we just saw we just um we just can't we were walking you know and we um we were in this bar 
I went to get his cigarettes and we Don't saw our, I'm not gonna tell the story, man, but man. our boy our boy got killed, right? Oh. Our boy got killed. And he's saying if if, if it wasn't it's like an if it, if we were there, he wouldn't Wait. have died. I'm saying if, if we were there, we would we would have died the fight, with him. Wait, the fight you know what is I'm saying? because the fight is because this is the crossroads. I want us to go deeper into the criminal life, and they saying that we need to go farther away from the criminal criminal life. Yeah, yeah. So it's like See, we all have to make a choice. Either we're gonna go time. this way or this way. And the reason why he says that because it seems like that's the only way we're gonna get some juice on the street. Right. right. Yeah. Like, and, he's, and, and Bishop makes a decision right then and there that we need to get. It's hard. a good point. But we, we, we should have went about it a different way. Like we said, it's decisions we had to make. That's yeah. a decision right there. And you know. Now you got to, hey, I'm um, sorry. But y'all got to watch the movie. I'm saying. Why don't y'all stop being cheap? <laughs> Seven bucks. Seven bucks? Go. Ah. Skedaddle. Can't, can't tell you it's gonna be a surprise. But I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't gonna tell you to eat. Nah, 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 nah. I tell them I'm a musician. EPMD. Nah, it's a little dollar bill. Just get seven of them. That's what we do. Come on, Lee, Lee. Really? Lee. Nah, EPMD, EPMD makes the EPMD make a special ad, Queen Latifah, Isis, cool. um, Lakem Shabazz, Tretch from Naughty by Nature, Tupac, <laughs> and Omar from, from Vision, um, Jermaine from Fat Boy and Robin. He got a little rap group. Yeah. Right <laughs> Fat Boy and Robin, check him out. Um, Big Daddy Khalil Kane. Is this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, it's rappers all in it. You're gonna see. When you when you see, you're gonna see it. MTV, I, Ed Lover, Dr. Dre, all them people was in it. Fab Five. Red Alert. Fab Five. Fab five Red, Red Alert. Alert. Chuck, chill again. out. Chuck, D nice. Everybody's, everybody's in it. Everybody hey, was, was down. You know, we had everybody down. Man. My man Richie yeah, Rich from Third man. Base, Plastic Man, Money Loves, DJ. We got the crew. This is this is a real The whole rap, rap industry just The whole industry was down with this. Word up, Doc. Okay, man. Bit of piece of the pie. But I'm saying though, about them seven dollars that you got to get with. Y'all need to go. Every Mike, question Mike you ask us eight like eight that, time you know what I'm saying? Up. Up. Charge the for it. See, my man trying to make a counterfeit tape. You know how they be having on 125th Street? That's my man right there. They trying to make a little counterfeit tape of the whole story. <laughs> Black you know market. what I'm saying? What's the deal? When young kids go see Out for Justice and Steven Seagal, who is a white person, he dope and all that, but he's a white person. Steven Seagal's kicking every single single frame of the film. He's kicking as soon as we make a movie and a black man start kicking a little tiny bit of ass, then everybody want to jump on our case and say black people is causing violence. In the I look theater. at it like When that's this. drag, got so much drag and drama. It's more drama than in the whole movie. They don't want to see us come up. It's as simple as that. As soon as we come up, they want to run up and hold us back because we're black. Go to a movie and somebody have a fight and you blame it on the movie. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck? You, you go to the movies, everybody in there, one, is arguing, telling this person to shut up, this, that, and the other, before the movie even starts. But it's just that the movie is so good, they got to have something yeah. to... Yeah, they just fight. You know when, what I'm saying? When, when Tyson and Ruddick is fighting, and yeah. there's a fight in the, um, of course, you know, the crazy fights outside of Las Vegas. Them people be drunk, and ain't nobody gonna say nothing because nah. there's millions being made, and it's going in another person's pocket. Right. And it ain't, only only two black people that's making money is it's Ruddick and Tyson. And all, of, and all the other people is getting paid off, and they ain't not gonna say nothing because that's a million dollar business that don't nobody want to touch. Now, this business is an up and coming thing. Black people are just starting to get good roles in films. So they want to stop it and nip it in the butt right now. Yep. Just like rap shows. Now, rap people are making, they don't want us to make no dough. You know what I'm saying? That's the real thing. They want us to stay low and just be kids with a little cop on the street corner getting coins thrown in it. As soon as we start casting checks, everybody start everybody start getting broke necks and wanting to stop mm -hmm. it. Going to the bank, everybody looking at you funny, gotta have this, gotta, this kind of ID, that kind of ID. Even people in the you business, they want you to play a real character, but they don't want you to be a real person. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you get real, everybody... <gasps> yeah. But they want you to be real in front of the camera to sell tickets. But don't be real in real life. That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be... Bloop, bloop. Shut up, the world. Stay in the scene. Earn is my man. Yeah, Earn is the man. If it wasn't for yeah. Earn, I wouldn't have did the film. Word is born. I've been gone in the middle of the film. If it wasn't for Ernest Earn Dickerson. Earn chill. I Earn like it because man. we had a little more than a director. We had a friend, yeah. a uh, director, a light man, a cameraman, all in that. one. We had the you man. You know what I'm saying? Ernest was the type of director, if you looked at that wrong, the wrong, the wall the wrong way, he would pull you to the side, explain to you exactly how he wanted you to go through the scene, this, that, and the other. Instead of yelling. Instead of just going take over and over and over, seeing if you'll catch on yourself. 
You know what I'm saying? And it was never like, go do your thing. Go, oh, young, young yeah. black kids, go do your go thing. Go in the corner and go do your thing. Go there and do your thing. Yeah. He was all, he was with us. Are you okay? Is there anything wrong? What's the problem? Want something to drink? You need something to drink? And, and it was always, pri we was always priority to earn it. Yeah. Everybody yeah, else might have been in it for a different reason, for money or time or everything. Ernest, we was always priority. So that was that was why we owe him everything. You know what I'm saying? He, if we blow up very, after this film, it's because yeah, of Ernest. It's because of Ernest. But Ernest is very accessible. I mean, we could always talk to him. He's very busy. He's got like uh, we come in, we have a job, we gotta act in this scene. Ernest has so much work to do. He go home and it's still hard. Working. It's hard for him. And I understood the amount of stress that he was under, but at the very same time, he stayed very relaxed. And with us, he was very accessible. We could always talk to him. Anything we needed, we could go to him. All the time. And I mean, considering this is my first film, my first feature, the opportunity to get to work with somebody like Ernest has educated me a lot in a very positive way so that the next film that I do, I'll just be that much better. Ernest should get all the props. I don't know how to say that enough. He should get all the props, because I'm not an actor. I'm a rapper on the streets and Ernst put time into me. You know what I'm saying? Treated, treated all of us cool. Yeah. Everybody got top billing. All the time, even when people was coming down on him. Yeah. Yeah, he all still stayed cool. Him. This was you know an everyday saying? thing. This was all the time. And you know see, what I'm saying? You know, it, 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 it's normal to hear a director holler and scream. But with the first time we heard Ernst, everybody you know, was like, flip, we was like, oh, First time we heard him scream, <laughs> he was like, on somebody else, yeah, but talking up. while we was acting. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? He cares like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's. He's in our corner. It ain't like you know he wasn't faking. You and know it, what I'm saying? It, it bugged us out. We was all like, Ern just got to finish hollering. He he hollered at somebody up there. I wish I was up there, you know what I'm saying? Because we never heard him really holler. We had fun though. Well, we had yeah. big fun on this. It I had must his say. good days and bad days. A lot of times we came in here like, don't come to my truck, don't knock on the door. But it rained all the time. Yeah, all the time. We should have did this in Southern California. It rained uh, all the time. Uh, wah, 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 wah. Uh, I just want to tell y'all, the future black actors of America, they're right here. Oh, <laughs> they're thanks, right sir. here. This is the new thanks, wave. Sir. The new thanks, wave. Thanks. Appreciate that. Good yeah. <laughs> looking out. Okay, thanks. <laughs> 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 now we just joking. Yeah. Can I get my mail back, Ernst? <laughs> Thank you. Ha! Ha! Ernst! Stop Just play it, Jones. Always, <laughs> always the funny man. Always the funny man. Ernst, can I get my money? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.